19 minutes after eight, let's come back to our conversation and get your views on whether or not they should have that jab. Gary's in Walthamstow. Gary, you're on the radio. Good morning. Your view? Yes, my view is, first of all, Nick, the care home system is a racket to keep uh, elderly people alive, some who can't even remember something said to them five minutes earlier. And what about the lovely times when people go and see their grandparents who are looked after in great homes by super staff? Well... There's obviously exceptions to the rule. No, I think it's the other way around. When you think... What do you base it on? My experience. Okay, tell me about your experience. My experience is going into care homes and, see, as I said, seeing people who don't know what time of day it is. But you can't write off an entire set... You're writing off an entire sector, Gary, by that one instance. Not one instance. I'm talking about dozens of instances. And... As I said, it's just, it's a racket for what? For, to, you know, to, to keep. I'm sorry, to, to, I, I, we're coming close to the point here, my friend. You cannot write off an entire industry as, that employs tens of thousands of people, many of whom are hard I'm not working. Writing off uh, any industry. Yes, you are. You, no, mean, yes, you are. Don't I mean, tell me you, what you're you doing. Say, you're to, writing it off as a racket, and there are tens of thousands of people getting up this morning, going in, putting in a shift in very difficult circumstances. I think it's very racist. And they hit, it's, it's a pardon? racist policy to, to force people to have a sharp implement stuck into them. You go into. What care on homes earth in London. Are you, you go into about? care homes in London. The vast majority are non Caucasian. Okay, I think that's it. I think you're there. That's the red card. Do me a favour, listen to any other radio station you like this time of the day. All my colleagues, if you want to listen to them, that's fine. You're banned, okay? I've just banned you from listening to this show. So if I ever catch you listening to this show again, or someone ever tells me that Gary and Walthamstow has been listening to the show, I will have to take action against you, OK? So you are banned at this moment. Suggesting that it's a racist industry is just absurd. Doris in Hungerford at 8.21. Good morning, Doris. Good morning, Nick. I have seldom heard oh. you so irate, oh. and I totally uh, agree with you. Oh, thank God. My, my main point is... Where in the equation is the patient's right mentioned? Ah, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You see, if I was in a care home, and I am over 80 now, right. and I still live on my own, Right. but should I need to go in, I would have to have... I would want the right to know yep. that every staff has had the injection. Yeah. And, and you are absolutely right. What is the furore about? I cannot understand it. Well, it's they're saying that it only lasts for six months, that they shouldn't be forced oh. to do it. What, just last. So time. why do we take it? Why do we ordinary people who live outside and care homes have the injections? I'm totally with you, Doris. And why am I celebrating the fact that at 10 past 12 this afternoon, or 10 to 12, I can't remember which, I shall roll up my sleeve and I shall have my third jab or boost or whatever they call it with absolute glee and delight because I believe in the British scientists who developed the jab. I believe in the NHS who are delivering the jab. And I believe in scientists around the world who tell you that it is safer to have the jab than not. Doris, look after yourself. You sound in fantastic shape. May you live happily in Hungerford for many, many years and never require the services of a care home. We'll come back to that conversation in a moment. Let's go to other matters and indeed to COP26. Now we've had a lot of senior politicians visit there. It is the turn of the British Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, who will be going up later today to address others uh, in COP and one of his senior colleagues now can give us an indication of what we're going to hear. I speak of Conservative MP, Economic Secretary to the Treasury, City Minister John Glenn joining me now. What are we going to hear from Mr Sunak? Good morning. Good morning. What we're going to hear is that uh, this uh, net zero is so important we need UK listed companies to publish transition plans as how they're going to get there. And we're going to put together a task force in the next 12 months to develop those uh, mandatory reporting uh, uh, rules so that they can demonstrate how they're going to align to what the government's agreed, which is to get to net zero by 2050. What if they fail? What if I'm, I'm assuming something like a sort of lead table uh, affair is produced. What if they're at the bottom mm. of the ratings? Well, if well, what we've first got to do is establish what those ratings are, how they're going to be measured and what they're going to be reporting on. We'll have to work with regulators. That's the Financial Conduct Authority that looks after financial companies and listed companies as well, uh, UK listed companies. And we we'll listen to what people in academia and third sector organisations and NGOs right. think. Um, we've got a big leadership role here to play because we're a massive financial centre in the UK uh, and people list their businesses here. 
and we want to make it uh, uncomfortable not to be able to uh, put forward those uh, net zero transition plans because people keep going on about greenwash with some uh, legitimate concerns this will remove uh, the risks of around greenwash because people will be able to say specifically and have to say specifically as a UK listed company what they're going to do to get to net zero. Um, the government are committed to it and we need companies to do the same. But just to use uh, one of your words there, how will you make it uncomfortable? What would government do? Well, when we've developed the rules on the mandatory uh, transition pathway, it will be clear what those companies that haven't done so uh, have done and you know we're on a, we're on a journey where it's becoming very uncomfortable for people not to in- address the net zero uh, imperative we've right. been very clear as a government about how we're going to get there um, and you know we will have to increasingly look at what new measures we need to take but the first step is to make clear what people do need to report and how they need to report it. And is it dependent on how large your company is? Would would this be literally sort of two people running the corner shop or will it be a greater company, a greater size? Well, we're talking at UK listed companies. UK listed, on the stock exchanges. Yeah, Yeah. and that covers all companies and the financial services sector as well, which is so important. Um, And a a lot of companies have come together. We've got a, a lot who've made that commitment to net zero. We're not mandating them to make that commitment we are mandating to tell us how they're going to get there will they ultimately face fines if they fail minister we haven't got to that point um that's not something we're considering at the moment what we want to do is have a robust reliable and world-leading reporting regime for that transition journey to net zero okay. we'll, we'll we'll obviously look at the, look at those all these matters in the course of this uh, next 12 months as this task force gets to work on it as the country powers out the, the champagne cork pops out of the bottle from the uh, from the pandemic isn't this going to be an enormous amount of paperwork and bureaucracy that they're saddled with well, that's why we've got to make sure we do it as efficiently, as uh, simply and transparently as possible. And that's why we're not going to do it just government. We're going to talk to the regulators, work with academics, um, work with people uh, in, in charities in the third sector who take a great interest in this and look at how we can make it world leading and, and, and not bureaucratic and lots of paperwork. But net zero is, a, is an imperative that we've got to all address. OK. As City Minister, are you concerned about this report on the front page of the Financial Times today for the banks not living up to green pledges? Well, I think the, 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 the problem is that people expect, uh, some people expect banks to be able to just uh, overnight change the whole nature of their investments. That's not realistic. What I'm pleased back about to Paris, is that we, Minister. Yeah, no, Paris made significant political commitments. This conference at COP26 here in Glasgow is about making good on those commitments. I'm pleased that we've got 130 trillion uh, of assets now committed to net zero. But of course, uh, as the Committee on Climate Change said, there will be a transition. There will be a move away from reliance on fossil fuels. Um, that needs to be rapid, but it won't happen immediately overnight. And not every firm will have the investments configured in a r- way years. to do that. I mean, if you look at the, the story, mm. is that banks have watered down their climate pledges and continued to finance the fossil fuel industry since COP in Paris six years ago. So they've done mm. nothing. The banking industry. Well, fact, I think that's a growth. I th- well, this is what the, no, the FT no, no, is. That's not true. Well, I mean, the FT is not uh, doesn't get everything spot on. I mean, what what you're talking about is a whole generalisation about all banks. So that's not what's happened. There will obviously be individual banks who've made individual investments decisions, or we've had a a concentration in one area, and that transition will take longer. But what I'm clear about is that obligation to set forward that journey journey on how you're going to get to net zero is something that we're going to mandate for UK listed companies. You, I think that's what people expect of us as, as a you, leading jurisdiction for financial services. You don't think the relationship between f- some large finance companies and some fossil fuel companies is too close? Well, I think lots of uh, fossil fuel companies are making that transition. They're using their profits to invest in renewable energy, rightly so. That's an urgent imperative and we want to help them to uh, demonstrate clearly and credibly how they're going on that journey. All right, last couple of questions. You'll be aware that the boss of Barclays, Jess Staley, uh, left the job two days ago. In the Daily Telegraph business section, it's reported he's in line for £22 million worth of bonuses. Is that the price of Mm. failure, Minister? Well, 
Uh, there's been a, a, a report done. Uh, the Barclays board have uh, decided it'd be best that he left. He's left, but his contractual arrangements as a as a as a private citizen are a matter between him and the Barclays board. It, it is is a large sum of money, but people get paid large sums of money in banks. And lastly, will you be supporting your other senior colleague and senior colleague Andrea Ledsom in her attempt to halt the suspension of Owen Paterson? Well, I'll be at COP today, so I won't be in the House of Commons. I think there are legitimate questions about the process that the uh, investigation took. I think it's appropriate that those are examined carefully by my colleagues in the House of Commons, and that's going to happen today, I understand, this afternoon. So you are concerned about whether Mr Patterson was allowed a fair hearing here, or no. some, of his colleagues, some of his allies, I should say? I think in all these matters, when there's a report from the Standards Committee, it comes before the House of Commons to vote on its recommendations. And in the course of that... Uh, discussion, amendments can be tabled. That's what the House of Commons is going to do today, to look at what process this investigation took, whether it was fair, and uh, that will be, you know, obviously discussed uh, at length, I expect, in the House this afternoon. Joining us from Glasgow, and thanks to you, John Glenn, Economic Secretary of the Treasury and City Minister. Late to the news, let's go one more call in now. Jenna in Colchester, back to our Jabs conversation. No jab, no job, how fair is that in your view? Good morning. Hi, uh, I, I think that we should be getting jabbed, everyone should be. Um, as a carer myself, when we sign our contract, we have a duty of care and a duty to safeguard. Yep. I think all these people calling in saying that it shouldn't be forced, it 100% should. What if that was your mum, your gran, your granddad? You know, you but, want to protect them as much as possible. But it's only going to last six months, some people would say, and there are concerns about its effectiveness or efficacy. Then that's what boosters are for, you know. We do everything we can. We get flu jabs every year. We, You know, a lot of people don't know what's in those and they still get them, but they're refusing the COVID jab. It's ridiculous. Strong views, Jenna. Thank you. We'll return to this conversation. Coming up after news, the Prime Minister possibly wants to replace the standards watchdog following its decision to ban Owen Paterson from Parliament. Full coverage and your views on that. It's 8.31 now. This is Breakfast with me, Nick Ferrari and LBC. The news is with Simon Conway. The Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, is due to announce new rules to make big businesses reveal how they will cut their greenhouse emissions. UK-listed companies and the financial services sector will be forced to publish their plans to transition to net zero by 2050. A four-year-old Australian girl has been found almost three weeks after she vanished from her family tent. Police found Cleo Smith in a house on the west coast. A man has been arrested after it's believed she was abducted. A new government recruitment campaign has begun to try to fill more than 100,000 empty roles in social care in England. The care regulator recently warned that staff are quitting for better paid roles in hospitality and tourism. LBC weather, early fog and frost in the south will lift and then dry with some sunny spells for many areas. A few showers and largely across coastal regions, a high of 12 degrees. This is LBC.